Hey, welcome back uh, to another tutorial here from Hollywood Editing Mentor. My name is Joaquin Elizondo, the creator of the Hollywood Editing Mentor program. And I wanted to do uh, part two of a tutorial that I had done a couple of months ago. Actually, when I, when I started this program, one of the first tutorials that I did, and it was called How I Organize My Avid Projects for Scripted TV Shows. And so in that tutorial, I talked about how I set up uh, my project folders. But I didn't go, uh, I didn't dive into those folders and show you what was in there. So I'm gonna do that today, show you how I, what kind of subfolders and bins I have in there. Uh, and also I'm gonna quickly go through how I, I set up uh, the tracks in my timeline. So uh, we're gonna do it here right now, uh, part two uh, on uh, how I organize my Avid projects for scripted TV shows. So let's check it out here. I, I got a, a 2018 version of Avid. Uh, and certainly this works for, for most versions probably of Avid. Uh, and also I want to say that, uh, you know, I want to remind you that, like I said in the first tutorial, uh, th you know, this is just the way that I do it. Um, every editor is different. Uh, and so if you are going to, say, assist someone for the first time, uh, you know, ask them how they like their projects organized or and set up. Uh, you know, certainly you can do that even before you, 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 you know, you go in for your first day of work but it's a good conversation to have. So uh, just you know, use this as a guide, because like I said, every editor is different. All right, so let's check it out here. Uh, you know, Like I said in the first tutorial, I just kind of went through and, and showed you what kind of project, or sorry, folders uh, I had here, uh, but didn't go really inside and, and, and showed you what was in there. And so let's just start here with uh, zero, 00 Cuts. Uh, that's my Cuts folder, uh, any major cut that I work on. Um, of, of an episode uh, will be in here and so for example you know we'll start off my first cut that I deliver is going to be my editor's cut then I'll go to my director's cut then producer's cut then network cut and then eventually lock cut and so any version of these cuts that I work on or that I want to might want to find they're going to be in there uh, I know I can just go in and say oh, let me see that network cut that was, that was sent out on this day if I need to I can just go in there and look for it I have this one bin uh, at, at the inside this folder at the top and, and that is for my current cut that, that's the only bin that's going to be there because and, and it's going to you know aside from say the, the, the show name the uh, episode number the cut in this case director's cut the date I like to put current here because that is the current cut that is the most current cut anyone that looks in there uh, whether it be you know anyone on my team uh, my assistant myself anyone I know that that is going to be the most current cut and so that's the only bin that'll be floating around there in that cuts folder uh, next I have scenes these are all my scene bins go so when uh, my assistant uh, preps a scene uh, they'll put it in here and then they'll put it in a bin just here inside the folder right and so when I come in in the morning uh, open the scenes folder I'll see that there's say for example scene 18 I need to cut that that day uh, and so I'll work on it and I cut it and once I'm done, I'll move it to cut scenes and then I know I just look I'm like, all right, I'm done for the day, hopefully <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know, I, I'll just wait for the next batch of scenes to arrive, right? And then in here you would have as however many scenes I've already cut, uh, but they're gonna be in there uh, If I need them Then uh, something I keep close by is is, is this uh, work bin In there I have you know, say like my audio effects presets video effects presets elements so anything like you know uh, uh, backgrounds whatever anything any tools that i need uh are gonna be in here and that's why i keep it close by because I, I jump between these folders a lot uh and one that i do keep close by is, is zero three music um you know and in there i have bins for say the the composer any music that they've sent the music supervisor any temp music say like anything that I've used for my personal library and that you know it's not cleared but you know I'm just I'm just temping with it I'm just testing it out uh, I would have a bin for that then I have sound effects uh, I like to have bins for 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 different categories right of sound effects I know some people like to have one bin with everything in there I don't I prefer to you know have say here like for doors vehicles weapons uh, you know, and I can have obviously many more bins, but I just know that, all right, if I need a, a vehicle, I know where to look, right? And that's, that's just me. Uh, stock, 05 stock is just any stock footage, any B-roll, any establishing shots, aerials, whatever, uh, I would put it in there. Uh, 06 ADR uh, VO, 
any temp ADR, any temp VO work that we do in the office, then I would go, it would go in here. And I like to set up a bin for, say, every character. In this case, it's a character named Joaquin, you know, and if I did a temp ADR for that character, then I would put it in there. And then I would have as, you know, however many characters uh, I, I, I have or attempt ADR for, then, you know, I would bend for that. Um, and the same thing for, for VO. VFX, uh, you know, I'll use it to, to send stuff out to the VFX department and then to receive stuff from them. So, like, if I need to send a shot for them to work on, uh, I'll put it in two VFX and then when we get it, it'll be in from VFX. Also, like, if I use any, say, VFX elements like muscle flashes, then you know there would be a bin for that in here. For graphics, uh, you know stuff like, say I have one here for locators, right? Um, so like if working on a show that uses you know graphical locators to to show, say they're in they're in a different city, I would put that in there. A main title maybe, uh, maybe credits uh, would all go in there. Outputs. Um, this is more for the assistant, uh, and and so I was a I was you know an assistant fairly recently and and so um this i would set it up i would have like say a, a bin for cuts any any this were all like the cuts that i would ship out and export this would it would be in there any scene references so like if a director needed a uh, to check out a scene a producer um you know they would they would go in there for turnovers i would have more subfolders you know because for example like all these like audio music picture vfx they, they each turnover has many elements uh, attached to it right so like for example if i did a audio turnover here on this day um this i, I like to organize it by day first and then you know for example here it's for audio but there you know it has you need a quick time reference you need a wave file reference uh, several other things um that's why i do folders within folders within folders so that it just keeps things much more organized um dailies this is where kind of like the raw dailies go where, where, where before they've been organized uh, in scene bins, um, so you'll you'll see bins uh, for each shooting day. I, I don't normally go in there. Um, I, I mostly work out of you know zero one scenes. That's where all every all the scene bins are when they're organized. Uh, and but I, if I ever need to go find something, or if the, my assistant needs to go find something uh, from a specific uh, day, they can go in this into the to that bin here and under ten dailies. And then at the end, there's a, a, a folder for the assistant. Um, this is where they can have all their you know, tools, any workspaces, anything. This is something uh, for them. And you know, it just keeps out of the way of the editor and, and just keeps everything much more organized. Um, so as you can see, you know, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, the idea is to not have all these like bins floating around at the top of the project, right? So I like to walk in and, 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 and see, see like this, see my, my project like this, you know? Sure, there'll be probably some bins sometimes at the top of the project floating around, um, but as soon as I'm, I'm done using them, I either want to delete them or stash them away in, in, a, in a folder. So I like to keep things pretty clean. Uh, so now I'm going to show you uh, how I set up my timeline. So here's my timeline. Uh, the first thing that I'll say about it is that I don't like to use more than uh, 12 tracks of audio because I just don't like to get these massive timelines. Um, I like to keep it at, you know, I think 12 is a good number. Obviously, if I need more, I'll create more, but I try to stick to 12 tracks of audio. Um, video tracks, you know what? I, I, I usually, you know, as I'm, as I'm editing, I only use two, two video tracks. Once I start getting into temp VFX and comps and maybe subtitles, any other, anything else, graphics, uh, slates, stuff like that, I'll create more, more video tracks, but I don't think I've probably gotten more than five. My main concern is always more the audio. I guess it comes from my assisting days where I try to keep everything organized, audio specifically, because when it came to turnovers, I didn't want to spend too much time cleaning things up when I do my, my splits, split uh, tracks. So I just like to stick to like, you know, kind of uh, designate, you know, a uh, certain type of audio for each track and, and stick with it, right? So for example, like I like to do the first four audio tracks uh for production audio dialogue um anything that comes from production sound i would put it there um for here like i'll set it aside for adr um you know but mainly just this is just uh, a dialogue right the first four tracks then uh we'll do five to nine uh, sound effects and i bring in my sound effects as mono i like them as mono 
uh, and I use only one track. Say if they come in as dual mono, I'll use one track. Again, I don't want to just, you know, because, you know, dual mono, you'll, you'll just take up all these audio tracks pretty quickly. So and you don't need that. I mean, I don't need it. Um, and so I'll just use one track. Uh, and again, you know, I try to keep it from, you know, say five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess, again, if I need more, then I'll, 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 uh, um, I'll add more, but usually try to stick with, uh, you know, what is it, five, five uh, tracks for, for sound effects. Um, and then at the end here, of course, music. Music I do bring as, in as stereo. And, you know, I set aside three tracks for it. I could honestly probably do with two. Um, and, you know, in this case, I, I, I created three. But if I didn't uh, have that third uh, track for music, then I would add that to the sound effects tracks. Um, so that's it. That's that's how I I, I set up um, my timeline and how I you know I set up my subfolders and, 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 and bins within folders. Uh, just gives you a better idea of how I set up uh, my projects in Avid for scripted TV shows. So uh, I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know uh, below uh, uh, or send me an email. I'll definitely answer any questions you might have about project organization. And so, yeah, hit me up. Anything, uh, I, I, I'm here to answer your questions. And, and don't forget to subscribe to the Hollywood Editing Mentor YouTube channel. I got a lot more uh, tutorials and other informative content for you. So subscribe and, and be notified uh, when those things go up. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. My name is Joaquin Elizondo, the creator of the Hollywood Editing Mentor program. I'll see you next time.